Well, I want to say congrats because you have like turned into like a bona fide superstar. Oh, thank you so much. And you've had like a really long journey in this music industry. You've mm -hmm. been through deals where, you know, certain people didn't get it. And you've just kind of just transformed into like uh, one of the, you know, artists on the forefront of this rap shit. So congratulations. I appreciate you a lot. Thank you. Um, have you noticed like besides... You know, obviously, you're doing a lot of shows. You're doing a lot of festivals. I see you doing clubs. You're in Vegas. You got you got Vegas residency right now. Yeah, I have um, I have one with Drace right now. Uh, before Drace, we did Jewel and Hakusan. Mm -hmm. So Tao yeah. Group. Nah, but like, have you noticed like, for you, was there anything that changed in terms of like where you started to kind of see like things finally really like work out in a big way? Um, like where you, in terms of like, were you like doing anything differently or was it just like finally the kind of the stars like aligned, you know? I think it's a little bit of both. I think, uh, when every, every time you see like an artist have a moment, I think there's like a wonderful team behind the scenes, like that's helping them be great. And right. I also think that the stars are aligning, um, and what I've learned through those moments is just to like be way more confident with, with whatever it is I'm doing and just be sure of it before I press go. Cause then it's like it's foolproof, for sure. Do you? Cause I feel like there was like a moment where you had gotten off of RCA because mm -hmm. you were on RCA for a while. Yeah, like four and a half years maybe. Um, and then the Russ record happened. Yes. And then I feel like after that it was just over. After that has been kind of busy because we well actually it was crazy because the best on earth happened and then the pandemic hit, mm. so we weren't really like able to work. Um, best on earth like in the clubs when it first came out right. we didn't even end up performing it together till a year later right so uh that, that changes things i think as well um there's a lot of songs that i think would have hit like in a different way had we been able to be outside and has had the stars in line at that time but either way i'm super grateful for how it all turned out because i'm just like so blown away like you your plans are never going to be as good as god's plans right. for real yeah i think like I was just like thinking like, damn, you got a record with Nicki and a record with J. Cole. Like two of the greatest of all time. Crazy, right? Yeah. Like do you ever like look back and just think like, damn, the last two and a half years have been like, it's kind of surreal. Like I got to kind of, do you appreciate it? Yes, absolutely. Oh my goodness. Like everybody that knows me knows like I'm heavy on prayer. Like I talk to God like a million times a day and I'm just super grateful. Like I'm, I'm one of those people that I... I've seen so many moments like come and go for me. Mm -hmm. So now I'm learning to just be like way more present in those moments and appreciate them for what they are and not like I seek no expectations when I put music out. I just be like, all right, I'm gonna put this out and whatever happens, happens. And it's always some amazing stuff that happens. And so I'm always like, it shocks me. Right. <laughs> Tell me the story on how, because uh, you've told it before, but like the London record is one of my favorite joints you put out. You did a great job on that record. Thank you. Yeah, it was. Thank a, you. I fucking played the fuck out of it on the radio. Thank you. Uh, but how does Cole end up on that particular song where you're doing the whole London thing? It's crazy because uh, we went to the studio to go meet Cole for a whole completely different song. And um, before we were on our way out, I was like, hey, can I play you something? Like, I'm, you know, I'm working on my project. I want to play this song. And he's like, yeah, go ahead. I, I press play. And he loved the song. He's like, I love this song. This is good. Like, um, I was like, okay, you know what? That's like, he just seemed like he really liked the song and I wanted to send it to him like some random day. So like two weeks later, I think a, a month later, I sent it to him and I was like, hey, just sending you this if you want to listen to it. Yeah, if you <laughs> want to check it out, since you said you liked it, since you, you said you liked it, it, you listen you know, to it in your car, on your bike ride, you at know. the gym, right. like whatever you want. And um, yeah, it just ended up working out like that. Like he ended up liking the song enough that he wanted to put a verse on it. And I was so happy about that because... Like, look at that verse. It's like one of my favorite verses of all time. Oh, he killed it. He got off on How that How could I shit. choose between this one and that one? I could have both. Oh, my God. He got off. He did not give you the throwaway Cole verse. You I don't think he has crazy? those, by the way. I feel like every Neither. time he gets on some shit, he bodies it. He does. And I honestly wanted to... I was like, yo, I'm going to go... Because when I first cut the record, London, it was like a vibey, fun record. Sure. Like, me and Aziz, we just have fun. Like, mm -hmm. if you know us, we go to the studio and we just try to have a good time. So we weren't over... We don't really try to overthink anything or try to make a, a hit or try to make a certain type of record. We just catch a vibe. So I wasn't overthinking or like pushing my pen to the to the bars, or like expecting to get J. Cole on that song. So when he put his verse on it, I'm like, I'm going to go redo my verse. They're like, 
he's like, no, 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 they wouldn't. They told me not to. They You're wouldn't not let supposed me do it. To, yeah, that's kind of like a you know, cheating. But like, yeah, I was like, bro, I, who who thinks when they cut like a random reference that Cole's gonna be on that song? Yeah, it's crazy. I think that's against like un, unsaid rap rules too. Like I, if you send a record in with your verse and then it comes out and your verse is way different, it's fine. I think that I think that might have been the root of the whole like cannabis LL thing back. But in the day. I didn't do it because I didn't want to change the the essence and the energy because you know it's some songs yeah. they got that a certain like energy to them. Did like anybody in London like feel like you were appropriating their accent? I mean, nobody said that to me, but... I just wonder, because everyone's so sensitive these days, and, like, you know, I have a shout to England, the colonizers of all colonizers, you know, but um, I just wonder if they had, like, you know, yo, what, like, you're taking our, you know, I mean... I got so much love in London. Such a great record. Like, I love London so much, and it became, like, my second, like, I want to say, like, my second or third home, because I was traveling to London so often around that time, so when we, when it came time that I did London, I was just so inspired by the culture. Yeah. So I was just, like... How can I put this culture in a song without trying to like piss anybody off, but right. still make it my own? 